So the node is shut down. We it, it took a while. As you can actually see it received the shutdown request at um, 3.04.11, and it didn't fully shut down until 3.05.16. So it took about a minute to flush everything it had in memory, all these incoming blocks, uh, write it out to the SSD, shut down gracefully so that we can resume it, and it can pick up right where it left off. But now let's do a CD. We're going to change directory into that dot Bitcoin directory. So it's in our user home, tilde slash, and it's called dot Bitcoin. So let's take a look at what's in there. Um, blocks, chain state, state, debug log. So if we take a look at this debug log, and we're going to tail it, which means just show the end part of this log. Um, it's just repeating what we had seen uh, in the console output. So whenever you need to go back and see what happened to the node, you can always come back and look at these log files, because um, this is where they get written out. So one thing you don't see here is a bitcoin.conf file. That's how we configure our node, uh, however, we, however we want it to behave. So we need to create it. So we're going to nano bitcoin.conf. And it's just a blank file to start with. And the only thing we're going to do to begin with is set the DB cache to 2048. So we're going to set it to 2 gigs because uh, we're running on the Raspberry Pi 4 that has 4 gigs of RAM on board. The DB cache defaults to 100 megabytes. And basically, my understanding is that as new blocks come in, they'll get written to the DB cache first, which is just stored in RAM. So it's only going to use up 100 megabytes of RAM to store the incoming blocks. And then once that cache gets full, when it reaches the default 100 megabytes, it'll stop what it's doing, and then it'll write that data to the SSD to storage. And then it, the, the cache is flushed, it's back to zero, and then it grabs more blocks until it fills it up again. Now, anytime you pause to write out to the SSD, it's going to uh, be kind of a, a, a bottleneck. So by setting DB cache to 2048, uh, it allows the Raspberry Pi to do more of this work strictly in memory without being slowed down by going to the SSD. And then once it reaches a full two gigs of memory used for the DB cache, then it'll shove that that fat write out to the SSD and write the changes to disk. Um, so I'm going to control X and hit Y to say yes, save it, enter. All right, so now if we restart Bitcoin D, um, we can see we now have half of that available for in memory UTXO set. Um, incoming uh, blocks, etc. Uh, and so it's going as it restarts, it's going to reload. Uh, there we go. So now we're off and running. Um, and you can kind of watch the cache readout here. So it's slowly growing over time. These are really small blocks. You know, each block could potentially be a megabyte uh, in size, but there were just so few transactions, the blocks didn't get filled like that. So the cache is going to keep growing and growing and growing until it hits, you know, and I can't remember, I, you know, I think I've read that it, it can only use half of the allocated DB cache. So it'll fill up to a gig, and then it'll write that out to disk. Um, but again, this is just an optimization step so that the Raspberry Pi can do this um, historical block ingestion faster. And it's not just getting a copy of the blocks, it's actually calculating and verifying every single block that comes in to make sure that they are valid, that they meet all of the Bitcoin uh, consensus rules. Uh, so that this way that you know you have a, a valid full history of the entire Bitcoin blockchain validated from the very first moment in, in time as far as uh, the Bitcoin blockchain is concerned. Um, so I'm going to pause here again, and then we'll get to the next uh, configuration step.